Welcome back to the shop. I am Brandon, and we are taking a look at the Niji 2S Plus. This is a 10 watt laser module. It actually has two diode lasers inside of it. And my goal with all of these reviews is to figure out how these machines break so you can spend your time making with them. And really this year with diode lasers, we've kind of seen two different form factors that have emerged. One is a standard square frame like the Make Block D1 or the O2 or Laser Master Engraver 2 Pro. And then kind of a cheaper version of those are these kind of cantilever frames. So ones like this, the risk of one long frame on the y-axis, and then you kind of have this cantilever beam. These are usually lower end in terms of price, and you can compare this to the Otour Laser Alfero 1. They're both this kind of weird configuration, but they both work pretty well. Now the work area of this is 420 by 255 millimeters. It's more like a long rectangle in terms of what you can actually engrave. It literally goes together with four screws and then you just hook in your laser. And in fact, I was setting up this time lapse to go about 30 minutes, uh, but really it took me maybe five. So super, super fast to get together. The zipper motors are giving you speeds that are comparable to the other machines out there. And some of their marking material, they're saying it's 1000 millimeters per second, uh, not millimeters per minute. And that's like insanely fast. Uh, and I was running it up to about 10,000 millimeters per minute. And that really seemed to be kind of the top end, which is the same as Otour, Atom Stack, all the other diode machines that are out there. When you compare this to the Alfero, this definitely has a bigger work area. And this aluminum extrusion is a little bit wider. But for the most part, the design is pretty similar. You got these acrylic plates on the ends, uh, the aluminum extrusion for all of the rails, and then you're using V wheels and belts to actually drive everything. This definitely isn't the strongest. You wouldn't want to put like a CNC router on this. It's really wobbly, really easy to move around. But since the laser doesn't push up against anything, this works fairly well. And really the only drawback to a design like this is if you're running really, really high speeds, you can have the tendency of this to shake or to tilt. But as we'll see in a second, you don't actually really use those higher end speeds anyway. So this works totally fine. Now Niji also has a more standard frame design that are like the 400 by 400 millimeters and even up, they have a max, which is massive that you can put a diode laser on. But what's been real interesting about all of these companies is they are starting to make the laser component separate from the frame. So you can kind of mix and match. So you can buy this laser module separate at the time of this recording, I think it's around 250 bucks or buy it all together as a kit. And in past videos, I've gotten questions about what exactly this is. This is just an aftermarket honeycomb bed. Niji provides one. You can also buy them online. And you especially want to use something like this if you're going to be doing cutting because you're going to want airflow underneath the cut. So the exhaust is getting out there and you're getting a cleaner cut. Because with this machine, cutting is something that you can do a good bit. And that is all because of this laser module. Now they're saying this is actually a 15 watt unit with a 0 0.04 by 0 0.04 millimeter laser dot. Sometimes you'll actually have a rectangular laser dot, but in this case it is square. And one nice thing about this is when you turn it on, um, the laser's kind of always on, but it's really low power. So I actually took the laser head off and pulled it way up to get it out of focus. And you can see that you have a square dot there. And as we bring it in closer and closer, that is how you get it focused to get the best cutting and engraving properties. Focusing this is really the only drawback I've seen so far with this design. You just use an Allen wrench to tighten the screw and you're able to move the laser module up and down, which is fine, but it is kind of hard to get the wrench in there. And then when you're actually focusing, you're trying to find where the smallest dot and the most power is gonna be. And at that point, you're usually good to go on focus, but then you kind of have to hold it there. You have to tighten it in. It's a little bit annoying, but it works. But when you compare this to the focusing mechanism in Otour, and especially with the Make Block D1, those are just a lot easier and a lot quicker to focus. Now a single diode laser normally won't have more power output than five watts. This is rated at 15 watts. I'm thinking it's really more like 10 watts. And they do that by combining two laser diodes together and then they focus it out the laser module. You can use this with pretty much any software that supports laser engravers. Open Gerbil is a pretty popular one. Lightburn is the one that I always use and we'll be using to do some tests here in a minute. But they also have a Mac and a PC app and they even have an iPhone and an Android app. At the time of this recording, I've had a few issues with the iOS app. I really can't get it to work completely, but I normally run everything from Lightburn anyway Anyway, so that really isn't an issue. On the back of this is the motherboard and there is a USB out as well as power. So you'll disconnect it right back here. 
Now for every laser that I review, I run the same test files through it so I can see where the best settings are for this machine, but also compare those to other machines. And you can see right here, these are the different tests that I like to run. These are all run directly inside of Lightburn. There's a few special settings you have to do to get them to work right. And I first start with these tests right here. You have an engraving test that just varies your speed as well as your laser power to give you different shades of black. And then I also run a cutting test. It's a small one right here. And then this one is a line in interval test. So this is kind of how you can test your resolution as well as test the width of the actual line. But if you're looking at engraving, we're getting marks all the way through the 9,000 millimeters per minute. It's really faint when you drop your power down to 10%, but you definitely have something this entire range. Now that's compared to the Otour Laser Master Engraver 2, which with this test was a 5.5 watt laser module. But especially when you compare these together, you can see that you can just run this machine a good bit faster and get markings that you want versus with this one, which makes sense because it basically is twice as powerful as that laser. Now a more apples to apples comparison, this is the Atom Stack X7 Pro. And you can see between those two, you're really getting a lot more power out of this unit. Now where the rubber really meets the road or the laser meets the wood are the cutting test. And so these are our cutting tests, which vary by speed from 100 to 400 millimeters per minute and power in 25% increments, but we do them in multiple passes. And you can see with three passes, we can cut at a bunch of different settings, but especially when you drop it down to just one pass, um, you can see we get a couple at 100%, but we're even getting one at 50% and 100 millimeters per minute. Now, because of that, I thought I would step this up to a quarter inch plywood. And even at a quarter inch, I was able to cut all the way through in one pass at 100% power and 100 millimeters per minute, and then some lower powers and higher speeds at more passes. And you can see right now the laser beam is going completely through the wood in the first pass. And actually this has been the first laser diode module I've been able to test that pretty successfully with. So normally the diodes I just recommend engraving with them, but with this one specifically you're gonna be able to cut out a good bit of stuff and you're not gonna have to run it at really 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 low speeds and lots and lots of passes. Now, if you want to use my overall test file and run it on your machine, you can download it at the link below. So the cutting performance is surprisingly good, but this does a good job engraving. I didn't do a ton of material tests. We just did wood on this video, but you can see a list of all the different things that you can both cut and engrave. Now, I did want to check the resolution and I ran this at 250 dots per inch on basswood and you get a really nice result and a lot of that is attributed to the laser dot and one way to see the type of resolution that you can get as well as the strength of the cutting power is how small you can get that laser dot basically how small you can get those 10 watts or five and a half watts focused into your wood so i do have a process to measure that size all i do is take one of these single lines in one of these test files i take a picture of it underneath a video microscope and then i measure it and for those results let's jump to the computer right now okay so we brought that picture in from the camera and you can see that we've got this ruler right here and it looks like it is about 0.2 millimeters uh, in the vertical. And then if you flip this guy over, we're at about 0.25, uh, maybe a little bit more in the horizontal. So they claim this is 0 0.04 by 0 0.04 millimeters, which would make it the smallest of any of the ones that I've tested. But actually it winds up being uh, one of the biggest. So you can see the other ones that we've tested right here and EG drops down at the very bottom um, with the best currently being the Atom Stack X7 Pro at 0 0.08 by 0.1. And even though it's got a pretty big laser dot, you're still able to get some pretty good detail. Um, so it may be big, but it still does a pretty good job. Now, in terms of price, at the time of this recording, this is $400 US, which is cheaper than the bigger unit, but you still get the most powerful laser module that I've tested to date. And we compare this to the other machines that are out there, that amount of power for that price is really good. Now, one thing that can make your cuts even better is adding air assist. And EG has a pretty cheap add-on air assist system. I think it's around like 20 bucks where you can add in compressed air and it'll shoot right where you're cutting and that'll give you much cleaner cuts. And it's nice to see that's an accessory that is already offered because when you're cutting at high power, you'll definitely have flare ups. You'll definitely have trying as you've seen from these other tests. So it's great that you can clean that up a little bit. And in general with all of these diode machines, probably the biggest drawback is that this is just out in the open. They have a piece of acrylic that will filter out the light, but I found with where you have to focus this, you really don't block much of the light. So they do provide 
provide safety glasses and you need to be wearing those at all time. Some of the other manufacturers will extend that piece of acrylic pretty much all the way to your workpiece. And that is great because it blocks nearly all the light but this one really doesn't do much. And also make sure you're in a well-ventilated area. You have some way of getting all of those fumes and all of that exhaust out of where you're working. In my case, I am in a garage. I normally just turn a fan on and I just blow it out the garage door. So what are my overall thoughts on this machine? It's kind of like those cars that have a really simple frame, but then people go in and just max out the engine so you have the most horsepower possible. This really doesn't have many features. It is really simple in terms of design, but this laser module is really powerful. So if you're okay with it being a little bit finicky, you don't mind working around some of the hard edges, you can get amazing results with this machine at a pretty reasonable price. Now I've been comparing this to a bunch of different lasers and I've actually put together a full playlist of all of those right there if you want to see kind of the competition. We're going to jump into that right now and until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.